come build with me this fake tiny home for my 100 baby challenge. So we're like 10 episodes in, aging our first teen into a young adult, and I thought it was time for us to have a new, better, and bigger house. Unfortunately, my budget didn't agree with me on that. This was like the third layout I tried. It's still different and maybe nicer than what they had, but honestly I would have liked a little bit bigger. But that just means we have room to grow. So in case you're wondering why the inside is all grass except for those couple of rooms, I want this to be a tiny home, specifically a micro home, because it comes with double skill gain, double relationship gain, reduced bills, and increased comfort of items. That's huge for a challenge like this. That means that my matriarch is making romantic relationships faster, it means she's building better relationships with her kids faster, it means her kids are building their skills faster. Honestly, I'd call a tiny home essential for this challenge. In my very first episode, I had a proper tiny home that didn't take advantage of any weird room glitches like I'm doing now. And honestly, there's more room than you'd expect. The biggest problem is that the kids cry. So they wake my matriarch up, they wake each other up, and no one was getting enough sleep. The kids and teens don't really cry though, so I made their rooms these fake rooms, because they don't need to be soundproof so I can make them a little bit bigger, whereas the infant, newborn, and toddler rooms are all real and small, so that I'm within the tile limit, but they're soundproof. I'm working on the kitchen now, and honestly, I went through and furnished everything with the absolute cheapest furniture I could find because I wanted to make sure that whatever I was planning I could for sure afford. A lot of it I went through and replaced with nicer stuff once I was sure I had the budget for it. One thing I really wanted in this build was a full dining table that everyone could sit at together. Ideally the shape of this room kind of lent itself to more of a round table but the round tables only fit six sims, so I had to do the long table to be able to fit everybody. I ended up adding another bathroom that juts out from the bedroom to kind of make the shape a little less awkward. That worked out well actually, because otherwise we were going to have one bathroom for all eight sims, and that would have been awful. I also added the toddler potties in this bathroom. I had like six in the old house, and I realized I didn't need that many. After some more rearranging, adding in an easel and some lamps, it was time to work on the roof. When I first started building in The Sims, I just made big boxes and just put a gabled roof on it and called it a day. But nowadays my build style is more, make an interesting shape and the roof will probably be interesting. Which while true, that also means the roof is usually a lot harder. But with this build I actually did something different. I tried to plan the building shape to give a roof that would be interesting, but like not impossible. So the roof actually went pretty quick. Now I've been doing some last touches, adding in a playground, and some extra toys. Honestly this playground is smaller than the old houses, but we really didn't need multiples of all the items. And even though this house kind of feels like a downgrade in some ways, we have really important things we didn't have before, like a TV, like a computer, like a dining table. And the kids have bigger rooms. So definitely in the future I want to do a more grand build, but this is still an improvement. Lastly I'm going through adding tile, adding wallpapers, trying to give each room a little bit of its own color scheme. I really like decorating kids' rooms in The Sims because it's the one time you can go ham on colors, but at the same time these kids aren't going to be in their rooms for very long because we just try and age them up so fast that it's hard to make really personalized children's rooms. They have to be able to fit like a wide variety of types of kids, you know? That being said, I still included the really cute sheep's rug from Horse Ranch in Jules' room because I think she'd like it. It was at this point that I realized I had forgot to put any windows in the house. Sometimes when I look at the toddler and infant rooms, they feel like prisons, and so the lack of windows in the entire house was not helping that. So I went through and added windows and used the last little scraps of our budget to add some last minute rugs everywhere, because the build was just missing that pop of color. I think I've said finally three times already in this voiceover, but really, really, we are almost done. In the final witching hour, I decided that I absolutely hated the exterior of the house, so I redid it and made it more of a light brown, and then added some terrain paint to connect it to an imaginary walkway. And with that, the build was done. Here's a little tour. I filmed this bit after I moved everybody in so you can see the kids paintings on the wall which I think is really cute and I also added the nightlights from their old house. The next episode comes out on Tuesday and we play it in this house so there's a sneak peek of the new baby. Honestly I've been having a lot of fun with this challenge so check out the series on my channel. I post new episodes every Tuesday and I build stuff like this weekly on my Twitch channel. Come say hi sometime, the link's in the description. Ultimately this is not my prettiest build but it's definitely one of my most functional. This large house for eight sims still counts as a micro home. That's incredible. I'm really looking forward to playing in it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. As always, have a lovely day. Bye!